cling to her like a sailor lost at sea. By birth or circumstance, I am timid. White pants. Just a glance at her white pants and I am lost, dissolved like a house made of sand. The stigmata. Coming up the stairs, my first sighting of her legs, coiled around each other like snakes, the muscles tied and then knot as she sat at the kitchen table. And then the electricity in her face as I walked past, as intense as a solar flare as merciless as a desert sun. Laying down the law, should I have confronted her from the start, telling her her high heels shoes were too noisy on the old wooden staircase, marching up the stairs like she was first in line in a May Day celebration? She was too young, and I had nothing to offer her but an interior life for which she was neither circumstantially nor emotionally ready, or never will be. The Battle of the Bulge. What makes you think you could have overpowered her, caught her off guard, caught her in a blitzkrieg, that I would have broken through her defenses before she had a chance to counter, to mount a counterattack, won her soul through her pussy? and would have known the garden before the fall. The cycle that is woman. Waiting for the bus like a fisherman's wife looking for sails. Dream jobs. I should have been a shoe salesman, maybe in the next life. My next wish would have been being married to a dancer. Skirt chaser. Her legs were so beautiful, I once went shopping just so I could look at them some more. So strong and shapely as she scurried around the aisles looking at skirts, and then going up to the counter and haggling over prices with the clerk with the same fierce determination that she did everything with. As she pants before the mirror, I wish she had turned around and pounced on me. Cash your charge. To a woman, it's all accessory. They like to be worshipped, and it's only the only way you'll ever win one. And the more you worship them, the more they like it. Can you blame her? Though what she did made perfect sense, the necessity of school, her career, her future, her teeth like a white picket fence, the restaurants, the entertainment, the SUV, the swimming pool, the mountain retreats, the beautiful house in Upper Valley to be shared by a kindred spirit who likes to spend. Still, I felt betrayed. Maslow's hierarchy. And once when I told her I could at last understand how a woman could love a man for his money, that is, for economic security, she blurted out, why of course she can, and that it was a fundamental matter of survival. I had always considered the mention of money and love in the same breath to be anathema, a sacrilege against the sanctity of love. Now study hall, and sometimes she would invite me to her room while she studied, ordering me to sit in a chair at the front of the bed while she leaned her head against the wall at the top, her face buried in a book, her slip halfway up her thighs. The Tales of Brave Odysseus O oh, love is not for the faint of heart, and oh how I would have loved to grab a leg and start licking it and sucking it like a dog his bone, every seamy muscle cherished by my tongue like Giotto applying fresco, and then sliding my lips along the outer leg, the muscle smooth and bowed like the bow of a Viking ship, long and strong enough to satisfy any archer, kissing and licking all the way up to her knee, where I would have stopped to my heart's content. She was neither crazy enough nor courageous enough 
to throw in with me. La Boheme. Between La Boheme and the American Dream, she chose the American Dream. Just her voice is enough to make me purr. Nouveau Riche. She is, China is, in the Americas of the 1950s. Spanish Sketches. Mockingbird singing on a post, Miles Davis blowing in his horn. Like the rest of her body, she has a neck of a greyhound straining on a leash. Woman. She moves like a dream before my mind can capture her. She moves like a dream before there was language. My intimidation regarding women stems from my unresolved Oedipal complex. My mother's legs. A woman passes with legs I would kill for, and there is nothing I can do about it the love of a young boy for his mother. PTSD. I immediately contracted post-traumatic syndrome disorder the first time I saw her legs. Her sleek, slight body, strong as steel, flexible as a meal. Virtual reality. If she had rejected me any more, I would have had to go back into the womb. She is oil. I am water. She is practical. I am a romantic. If we lived together, we would need a lot of room. I would want us to live in one room. Risky business. Sometime during the first winter, it occurred to me that the reason she was so harsh with me was because she loved me, but couldn't admit it or her life would fall apart. Fierce love. She resists, she resists me because she loves me, and she resists me fiercely. She is too rough for me. I am too gentle for me. She was too young to appreciate me, and now I am too old to do anything about it. She would have had to throw her life away for me, and what for? A farty old fool with a bus pass, living off Social Security in a rented room? And yet I insisted. Butterfly stroke. Making love, pressing her loins into mine, holding her waist, her ribbon waist, completely powerless as she takes my seat. In truth, she was ashamed to sit with me. In truth, I am ashamed to sit with me. The world of dust. If we had become lovers, it would have been unbelievable, prolonged bouts of love, an emotional bonding as deep as our sex, a neurological connection in which we would become fused together and left the world of dust behind. She was a young girl trying to make her way in the world, be compassionate. She was a bitch. As the birds and the bees, man is powerless as she takes his seed. A woman overpowers a man when he has an orgasm. When she has one, she is liberated. Different species. Man is of nature. Woman is nature. Childbirth. As an artist, I was never interested in money, per se, i.e., as a goal in itself, but just enough to get by, to allow me the freedom I felt I needed to live and express whatever creative energy I had inside me, like a woman ready to give birth. I had hoped with her genius she would have 
seen something in me that would have made her want to share a life with me, but it was too much to ask. Either or. Any woman who falls for me would be a fool, and if I had the money she wanted, I wouldn't want them. I would not want her to love me for my money. You haven't any money, you ignoramus. To be a pretty woman and have men hitting on you all the time would be like living in a neighborhood of bullies. Not all women, beautiful women, like being beautiful. Some women hate it, resent it. Indian refrain. If you want to be happy and live a good life, never let a pretty woman your wife. Women don't need men, and if they do, they don't need you. As the walled garden of medieval painting, women are impenetrable. The woman has her eggs and the delineation of power on the evolutionary tree. The closed garden, the walled garden, the medieval symbol of woman from the National Gallery of Art, Washington, D.C. Men must egress, it is in our genes, to run and shoot in ambience to the hunter tradition. The woman keeps her eggs in one basket. University. Everywhere you look, women are going to class and you can bet they're not going to support a man. The superior sex. And only for what they have and have always had that gives them power over us. Not only for what they have and always have that gives them power over us, but also because there are so many, bi no more bison to kill, no more woolly mammoths to hunt. And the female is better suited for the modern world, with its call to academic excellence for money, job, and economic independence. Flamingo. In the cafe, an exotic bird with spaghetti straps, her nose bowed like the bill of a flamingo, her body lined crooked but elegant in profile like Queen Naphrodite. Social role. The male ego, the male gender, is on the verge of collapse. No social role to support it. It implodes upon itself like a star before it becomes a black hole. As the earth is dying, so the male is dying, with nowhere else to go and nothing else to prove. Engineer from Chihuahua, a change of pace. You are an alpha female, and I am an ant at your feet. I'm so taken by you, you can step on me if you like, for I would like to give you whatever pleasure you desire, though just being around you would be enough for me. She is an engineer by trade, an accountant at tax time. She has the body of a meth freak tight wire, always a lot of tension. She came and sat beside me, though there were other chairs in the room. I asked if she were married. She seemed unconcerned about money. Then she excused herself and said she would wait for her friends on the couch. I did not see them enter when I came back. She made a contact with me for ten minutes. Then she got up and led the troop to a table where she placed herself so she could look directly into my face. While keeping a lively conversation, she looked so deeply into my eyes, I couldn't believe it. Well, no one knew the difference. It was as deep a look as I have ever received. When she left, she hid herself behind the herd giving me a last-minute look as she went out the door. Oriental women have savage hearts. The power 
of endurance. The Japanese woman in the cafe, so controlled in everything she does, a Buddhist exercise in containment, that I could have neither done nor endured such precision, even as a young man. Making love. Or perhaps it is in the inter-exchange of energy with the Oriental woman, the interplay of yin and yang forces, and that love has nothing to do with it. Or that perhaps it is the Oriental way to have nothing personal between you, and that this distance is the ultimate expression of love. Another Oriental in the cafe, her lips pursed like she was having sex. Her legs are beautiful. I would like to lick them. Eraser. Erasing her exercise book, her back muscles flexing like in the throes of passion. Jealousy. In some species of birds, the male will remove the sperm packet of another male to ensure his labors will not be spent caring for some other male's progeny. In lions, the male lion will kill the, kill the cubs of another male for the same reason, to bring the woman into season. Aggie. In the cafe, another oriental woman with the word Aggie written across her bottom. She steals a quick glance at me. Her lips are liquid. It makes me feel like we're having sex, while her boyfriend begs her for forgiveness as she assuages him with soft eyes and soft kisses. Bacchae. The Dionysiac Sparagamos, whereby the frenzied females tear a live bull apart and eat it raw. A woman would kill for the right pair of high heel shoes. Women are better wired than men, need men less, are more independent. Dr. Ford, penis envy is the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Love is being joined at the lower depth of our being is what love is. All the rest is calisthenics. Musical chairs. Trying to strike a chord, I play La Boheme through the walls, smuggling a little La, uh, Luciano Pavarotti and Mirelli Freneni as she refuses any interest outside her chosen field, and I figure it might do some good, take some of the edge off her shark tooth personality, and sneak in a little Western culture besides. She says she likes rock and roll. And so does he. Touche. Two years and she only let me touch her twice. Once when we were playing cards and she won a game and got very excited and I took the occasion to congratulate her and to shake her hand. It was very rough, like she had hoed a garden. The other was when I congratulated her when she graduated. She moved out on Friday the 5th, the first week of August, thus having completed two full years. I wish she had moved out when she said she would, three months more of her boyfriend and her knocking at my door when I didn't want to see her anymore. When I was young. My problem is that I wasn't young when I was young. Three months gone another day I've missed her, which doesn't mean I haven't thought of her every day. Drinking tea. When drinking tea, she told me, I feel hot. And I told her, it must be the tea. A short time later, she again told me, I feel hot. And I again told her, it must be the tea. The third time she told me she was feeling hot, I told her, maybe it's me. And she said, maybe. Last look. She came back for reasons I can't explain. 
but soon after her arrival, she asked if I might leave so she could be alone. I suppose it was for her to take a last look around at what had been an important part of her life for two years, and I had to smile when she asked me, do you trust me? And I answered, just don't take anything that's expensive. And she answered in a note of feigned sarcasm, and what do you have that's expensive? Redcoat. By surprise, I saw her in the bookstore early in the year. I thought she'd gone to Phoenix as the semester had just started. It was just a furtive glance as she suddenly appeared on the side to show herself to look at the time, and then as suddenly to disappear behind. They left soon afterward, him seemingly in a huff, and her in the same red coat from when she first arrived, which had grown more subtle and beautiful in time, with her trailing him from behind. I was surprisingly cool considering the way she had always unnerved me, but when I got home I erased her telephone number from my book, not because I was angry, but because I no longer felt I had to take care of her as a parent to child. Still waters run deep. She said she never saw me as a man. I would have shown her. As for me, I'm having trouble peeing, and it's just a matter of time when they cut off my legs because of my neuropathy. My legs are turning blue like the beautiful blue sky of the southwest. Claw toes, a stupid life, a stupid death. I was crucified through my toes by a sausage maker. Why I came? I came to the southwest for the blue sky, the sense of space to the horizon, for the Spanish-speaking people. Adios amigos. I look at things like I'm taking a final glance. Don't waste your lips on words I've heard before. Kiss my tired head. She's out again. The space on the other side of the wall is empty. Concept is a man's invention. Women are total immersion. California bimbos. California bimbos, that's what I would have liked, a lifetime of California bimbos. Journey of the Magi, temple offerings, cash or charge. With women it's all accessorizing, and the more you spend, the more you worship them. The spider, she treats me like the spider treats the ant running around in fast, dizzy circles, wrapping its lasso around the much larger ant in smaller and smaller trajectories, as the ant becomes more and more immobilized and the spider gets closer and closer until it can't move anymore. And then the tiny spider sticks its pointed dagger into the ant and sucks the blood out of it. I treat my body like a temple overrun by rats. Tug of war. Between passion and timidity, how could I have ever been happy? At the moment the spider pierces its flesh, the ant loves it. Dying for you. I don't care if I'm shaking at the withers like an old horse when I die, to be with you. Sun King. If she wants to be, she could manipulate the sun. She is as manipulative as a pulley, as controlling as the moon, the tides, the head horse in a herd of horses, more willful than I could ever tame. She is so brilliant she could calculate the end of the universe and get it right. I don't think she could ever love me enough for me to love her again. The seasons. 
When I knew her, I was in the last days of autumn. Now I am in winter. Nastiness is sex. If life was a movie, I had to walk out on it a long time ago. Evaporated milk. As my parents told me, evaporated milk is only for coffee. So I became a Catholic. Jesus was a Gnostic. They made a Christian out of him at the Council of Nicaea, a family man. The business of America is bankruptcy. Blue skies. America, the rest of the world wants to bring you down. No more blue sky. America is dead. It just hasn't hit the ground yet. Barnes & Noble, looking for a clean toilet seat some little kid hasn't already pissed on, like looking for the promised land. Depression, masses of people, no space left, a crush of people, a horde of people, almost a mob in the Middle East, no space left, eating rocks, no hope in sight, no hope left behind. A gray omnipresence of land and sky that sinks into your nervous system and absorbs the sun. Daycare Center. One god pisses on my head, another god shits in my mouth, while the other gods play the marimba on my ribs. A market in Jenin. The chimpanzee has 98 of the genes or chromosomes as humans, as the woman shrieked, they won't leave him alone, as two territorial chimps, five times stronger than a human being, attacked her husband and wouldn't stop tearing him apart until someone shot him dead and dead. That's a carpenter. If life's got any stupider, they'd have to invent new words. God, but I redeem a lot of sins. My problem is that I believed in God for too long, and I'm tired of making excuses for him.